In this film, we're going to look at a mythical supernatural creature that I've been obsessed with since the age of sort of 15, 16 and plus years. Now, a lot of people will think of this creature as something from just the movies or something from a novel. But when you look at the root behind this myth and supernatural legend, it actually goes back centuries and centuries and a lot of different people and countries take this myth really seriously and there are a lot of different types of versions of this particular mythical creature we're going to talk about today and that creature is the vampire so let's take a walk down memory lane and look at the history and the myth of the vampire so what is a vampire so a vampire in short is a undead creature or entity that drains the life force out of you whether that's your energy or your blood now there are loads of different types of vampires each country has their own version of vampires some are called different names but they are allegedly the same the same entity the same being they have the same purpose they do the same thing in the myth but where does that stand today where does the vampire myth stand today where did it start and how did the vampire myth get to where it is today? And that's what I want to just go over some vampire myth uh, history really and where it stands today in the 21st century and how we got here. So what is believed to be one of the first accounts of a vampire is an actual engraving in a drinking bowl. Now this is a prehistoric drinking bowl from prehistoric times. And it, it's an engraving that pictures a man uh, copulating uh, with what is believed to be a undead. And the engraving also shows this alleged undead in the engraving next to it with his head chopped off. And this is believed, there's a journal that's been published, and it's believed that this is a warning for the undead. So if the undead comes after living human beings then there will be consequences heads being chopped off is one of the ways to kill a vampire allegedly um, so this may be the root of where that comes from so that's one of the ever first pictations of a vampire a San Basam this is the name given by the Ashanti people to vampires from Africa and there are there's another name for vampires from other parts of the world They're called Upaya U-P-Y-R But they're all They all focus around the same um, Myth and the same They drain the life force of you Some cultures they are depicted In different ways Some are more animal like Some are more monster like And then obviously some are more Human looking like Or animated corpses so, it's gone back centuries, the vampire myth. And a lot of people now will think of vampires and they'll think of vampires from films, whether that's the Dracula films, um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer series, uh, obviously, um, I was obviously a big fan of that, massive fan of it. Um, and then obviously, the last 10, 15 years, you've got the Vampire Diaries and the Twilight films. Some people might not even know that the vampire myth is an actual thing they might just think it vampires were a fictional thing that were, was created literally in books but it goes a lot deeper than that in fact there's a there's an account of a lady called Elizabeth Bathroy from the 1500s um, and her nickname is literally the blood countess now what she would do she would order her guards to bring her servants while she was in bath she was in the bath 
and her guards would hold the servant's head over her and cut her throat and she would literally bathe in their blood and I think there's over 400 counts of her killing people she was eventually uh, caught and she was imprisoned within her own uh, walls within her own like sort of castle or mansion but here's the thing they bricked her up so there was hardly any oxygen there was no food there was no light years later they dug her up they opened her tomb to find a in their words the witnesses words still beautiful still preserved Elizabeth Bathroy no decay no smell she was still perfectly fine years later and she was a human she wasn't undead but she believed that the blood of these women would help her skin would make her stay young forever and she you know it, it was more of a, a compulsion she needed this blood to stay young to feel young forever and that was in the 1500s but what about any time any cases like you know more recent obviously more recent being in the last hundred years well let's take a trip to London now in the 1970s in London there was what they called a, a vampire epidemic now the Highgate Cemetery in London is huge and there was allegedly loads of strange activity there were people that lived near the area that were becoming weak acting strange and there was actually an account where one young lady actually had puncture holes in her neck when she woke up and she was just acting very bizarre very different very weak anyway there was a priest called Sean Manchester and he's quite famous for this and he is now renowned to be quite involved with uh, not the occult but you know hun hunting the occult trying to rid of evil and he went on a hunt for this vampire literally and he went walked around the, uh, the Highgate grounds uh, trying to dismiss any negative energy any you know any demonic energy and it was alleged that he tracked the the alleged vampire down to a semi neo-gothic mansion and they destroyed the vampire um, now the actual accounts and witnesses for this is a bit vague um, but he is renowned to be you know some people call him the vampire hunter and to this day the Highgate vampire legend still goes on um, some people think that it's a vampire ghost as well and loads of other strange activity goes on at Highgate Cemetery as well um, sort of ghosts and peculiar um, peculiar sightings of strange phenomenons and stuff but Sean Manchester actually has a proper real life vampire hunting kit and this is seen on another documentary that somewhat inspired this one True Horror with Anthony Head and he, is, he features in it uh, on the vampire episode and you know he has a really nice laid out box um, you know with a stake in it holy water um, a bible in it um, and he's he, you know he's described as a real life vampire hunter and that was in the 70s and a woman was allegedly being visited and harmed by this uh, alleged vampire at night and this was classed as an epidemic at the time and that was in the 1970s I know what you're thinking that was 50 years ago um, so what about right now right now in the world well in other countries in different parts of the world the vampire myth and legend is taken extremely seriously and precautions are taken if one is to believe to be a vampire when they're buried cages surrounding the grave and there are actually stories not just stories real life accounts of people trying to banish vampires uh, it's a little bit graphic but I'll tell you 
So somewhere in Budapest, a family member passed away. And after they passed away, other family members were getting really ill and sick. Now, in this part of the world, the vampire myth is still quite, still taken quite seriously. So, the first thing they think of is the relative that's died, that's recently died. So what they did is the relative's brother, some of his friends and his family, desecrated the grave, dug it up, and found blood protruding from the deceased's mouth. They cut the deceased's head off, they staked it through the heart with a pitchfork, they then removed the heart, burned the ashes, and then the, all the family members that were sick had to drink those ashes within the water. Now this is one of the, this is quite a common way to rid of a vampire. And this isn't just in Budapest, you know, this is in other parts of the world as well. And this has gone on for centuries. Now obviously, you won't have people doing that in the UK today, but in cultures in the world, the vampire myth is taken really seriously, still, in the 21st century. And that account only happened about 20 years ago, and people still take precautions, concerns that their loved ones or relatives will come back as vampires. So as I stand here at this beautiful church, there are really old tombstones and graves, that are at least two or, th two or three century, centuries old. But it's strange to think that 100 years ago plus, even in this country, the vampire myth and legend was more than a myth and legend, it was taken very seriously. And if someone would allege to be a vampire from this cemetery, well, it's not really a cemetery anymore, then there's something very similar could have happened. The grave would have been exhumed and they would have examined the corpse to see if it had, had any signs of being a vampire. So what are the signs of being a vampire? Well, if they open the casket up and find that fingernails are still growing after death, that is a sign of being a vampire. Obviously, blood protruding from the mouth is would be considered as a, as a sign of a vampire. Hair still growing after death. And redness in the cheeks. So life. So it, appears that the corpse is still being nourished somehow. Now these are some of the common signs they would look for when trying to identify if a corpse is actually a vampire and returning from the grave, whether that's in, in actual physical form or in a spiritual form. But right now in the UK, a lot of people think, well, yeah, this is really interesting, but that's not going to happen around here. But the great thing about unknown myths and supernatural things like this is that at the end of the day, you never know. You literally never know. And I've been fascinated by the vampire myth for years. And actually, let me show you something. So I got this when I was 16 years old. Now, I'd already was really into old horror films, like from the early, like 1930s onwards, but I'd recently got into Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I was gradually getting all the box sets and stuff, and I ordered this, the Vampire Watchers Handbook. And it's got all the history, it's got all the accounts, all the, from different parts of the world, um, New Orleans, have their own version of vampires, Highgate Cemetery Vampire, as I have gone through. Uh, it's a really, really good book. It kind of, it gives you loads of history, uh, loads of knowledge, summarises stuff as well. It's not too big. Um, vampire Strongholds, so the hotspots for vam alleged vampires in the world. And it's just, it's just really good, and it's got some really good um, pictures on it and art as well. And it's just really good, so I would recommend this. Uh, so this is the Vampire Watchers Handbook by 
Constantine Gregory. I believe he's done a few vampire books. Um, and it's got a little sort of mirror on the front as well. Uh, this isn't a novelty thing. All the all the things and all the information in this book is, um, you know, is from journals and actual accounts and real history. And it's really interesting, so I would recommend it. What about modern vampires? So these days, we actually have groups of people that identify as vampires. People that live vampiric lifestyles. So they will dress like vampires. Um, they will sleep in the day. Um, work at night and they will go to cl underground clubs um, where there are people like themselves like a vampire society so to speak and some of them actually drink blood now this isn't from they don't prey on people and hunt people down um, they have what they call donors donors and these are the real um, you know, real life people that just identify the persona and lifestyle as a vampire. Then obviously you have, uh, there's a f one or two quite infamous serial killer cases that, that have been nicknamed the vampire because they've uh, drank people's blood. I think that that's more of a psychological thing. Um, so those are the sort of modern vampires that you get mostly today. Um, and then the psychic vampires. Now this is people that drain your life force psychically, whether that's because they have um, the capability of, uh, you know, controlling someone's mind um, psychically, um, or they literally just drain you emotionally and mentally, um, and that that's another version. That is a psychic, psychic vampire as well. Um, so people that people that um, have to put up with uh, mental abuse. Um, that is a form, technically a form of a psychic vampire. So, those are the most type of vampires that you come across this day and age. People that take on the persona as a vampire, dress like one, and people that have mental health dis disorders and kill people and drink the blood. Um, but for me, it will always be the classic. When I think of a vampire, I think of an old, really old church, cathedral, with really old tombstones and gravestones and the vampire raised, comes out of the ground at night um, and stalks someone and drinks the blood whether it's stalking someone at the house or stalking someone in the streets and I always think of it as like the setting of like sort of the early 18, 1900s um, that's what I think when I think of a vampire and then you know it's just it's just gone on and on my, my fascination for for vampires and all things like this so I got into vampires and then that struck me interest into werewolves and then other unknown creatures cryptic creatures um, which I think are a different thing um, but yeah um, vampires um, I've tried to sum this video up so it doesn't go on for like an hour I hope you've enjoyed it I'm gonna call it now I am thinking of doing a separate video on the Highgate Vampire, um, so the Highgate Cemetery in London, that vampire incident. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, please share and please subscribe to my channel. Um, there was quite a lot of people walking around and stuff today. Um, I wanted to do more shots where I'll put my camera down and I was, you know, more of a documentary style, but I've done it, some of it's vlog style like this, but I, re I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, What's your favourite vampire film? Uh, what's your favourite supernatural mythical creature? Let me know in the comments below. And I am doing another one of these on werewolves, um, which I will use a different setting for. So, yeah, uh, that's it. Um, stay safe.